we're doing this new project called Stargate that has about 100 times the computing power of our current computer because we want to answer exactly that question. Um, we used to be in a paradigm where we only did pre-training. And each GPT number, one, two, three, four, each of those was exactly 100x of, or not exactly, but very close to 100x. And at each of those, there was a major new emergent thing. Um, internally, we've gone all the way to about a, maybe like a 4.5. So you, if you want to get to a 5.5, you would need that 100x more. Um, I'll come back to that in a second. The most important thing that happened in the field, or at least to us in the last year, is these new models that can do reasoning. Um, they are an incredible new compute efficiency gain. And we can get performance on a lot of benchmarks that in the old world we would have predicted wouldn't have come until GPT-6, something like that, from, from models that are much smaller by doing this reinforcement learning. Um, so we kind of have a sense. Now, the trick is when we do it this new way, it doesn't get better at everything. We can get it better in certain dimensions. But we, we can now, I think, more intelligently than before say that if we were able to pre-train a much bigger model and do this where it would be, and the thing that I would expect based off of what we're seeing with a jump like that is the first bits or sort of signs of life on genuine new scientific knowledge. So right now, GPT-4 can, or let's not, let's, that's even too easy. Let's say like O3, our very latest best model. Um, that can program unbelievably well. And if people have already done it, it's not so good at going to like invent totally new algorithms and that's the, or new physics or new biology. And that's the thing I think you'll get with the next two orders of magnitude.